This garden universe vibrates complete. Some we get a sound so sweet. Vibrations reach on up to become light, and then through gamma out of sight. Between the eyes and ears there lie the sounds of color and the light of a sigh. And to hear the sun, what a thing to believe, but it's all around if we could but perceive. To know ultraviolet, infrared and x-rays, beauty to find in so many ways. Imagine looking up at the night sky and seeing not only the stars, planets, even the auroras, but hearing them too. Down here on Earth, we are used to seeing and hearing things, but we don't hear the sun, our nearest star. But if our eyes were sensitive to the pressure waves occurring within the sun, then we could see the sound, almost like a type of synesthesia. Now, some of you out there will be quoting the tagline from Alien, in space no one can hear you scream. And that's true, but there are exceptions where there is sound in space, but more on that later. What we define as sound is a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave through a transmission medium such as gas, liquid or solid. We hear this movement with our ears in the air, the gas around us, and our eyes pick up electromagnetic waves at very high frequencies, far, far higher than the frequency of sound that we can hear. But if you take those electromagnetic waves and sonify them, then you too can hear the universe. The way we look at the universe with just our eyes hides so many things in plain sight. But with the use of techniques such as sonification, we can reveal so much more in new and exciting ways. However, sometimes you might want to keep some things hidden, like the private data on your computer and what you've been looking at on the internet. If you want to stay out of the crosshairs of marketing companies and others, then you need something that can stop them tracking your every move. NordVPN combines both with not just a VPN service to hide your computer's real IP address and make it much more difficult for hackers to try and gain access to your computer, but also a threat protection feature to stop tracking, block malware and intrusive ads. NordVPN can be used on up to six devices at once and also encrypts everything you send over it, making it ideal for mobile apps when you don't know if an app is using for secure HTTPS protocol. If you find yourself being geographically blocked from websites and services just because you're in another area, Nord can make you look like you're from another country or even on the other side of the world. So you can view sports channels, movies, and TV that you might not have access to in your country. Nord also has features like auto connect and kill switch. So that should you forget to start or turn off the VPN, you won't accidentally reveal your true IP address and location. Act now and you can get Nord's two-year deal plus four months extra for free by using the link nordvpn.com forward slash CuriousDroid, which is at the top of the description below. And there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee. So it's risk-free and there's no excuse for not trying it out. This is a video which I was going to do a few years back, but I put on the back burner until a couple of weeks ago when I happened upon a project called HARP which is run by NASA. And no, this is not the HARP, the Atmospheric Heating Project, which I've spoken about before. This is the Heliophysics Audified Resonances in Plasma Project, or H-A-R-P, HARP, which I will come on to later. But indirectly hearing what goes on in space is a lot more common than you might think. Back before digital TVs and radio, or if you listen to longwave or shortwave bands, then the signals sent out by the broadcasters are analog. And if you unplug the TV aerial or tune to a spot between the stations, you would see random snow or the moving ants effect on the TV and on the radio, a hissing sound. Well, part of that sound and images comes from the CMB or the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is the oldest light in the universe, which was emitted just after the Big Bang when the electrons and protons that formed the plasma recombined to form the first hydrogen atoms as the temperature cooled to around 3000 Kelvin when the universe was approximately 379,000 years old. 
Since then, and over 13.8 billion years, this light has been stretched by the expansion of space, so much so that it is now in the radio spectrum and can be picked up by our electronic equipment like TVs and radios. But this is not the only signals that we pick up from space. Anything that interacts or emits charged particles, X or gamma rays, can make signals that can be picked up. Pulsars are another phenomenon that was originally mistaken for extraterrestrial signals. Pulsars are neutron stars, super dense remnants of once large stars that have run out of fuel and gravity has taken over to produce a supernova. During the star's collapse, the crush is so great that the electrons and protons combine to create neutrons and go from multiple times the size of our sun to something which is about 20 kilometers across and become the densest objects in the known universe outside of a black hole. These stars just didn't have the mass to go beyond the neutron star stage and become black holes. So a one centimeter cube of this material would weigh about one billion tons here on Earth. It will take an 800 meter cube of the Earth's crust to weigh about the same. Most of these neutron stars just go cold and produce X-rays, but some inherit the magnetic fields from when they were giant stars. And as the star collapses, their rotational speed increases. And in the fastest found so far, they do a complete rotation 716 times per second. Their intense magnetic fields focus particles into incredibly powerful beams, which we hear as regular clicks or pulses. But with the fastest ones like PSR J1748-2446 AD, it's a snappy name, at 614 rotations per second, it sounds like an audible tone at the musical note of D5 sharp. Now, when it's said that there is no sound in space, it's because space is normally a vacuum. So there is no medium like gas for the sound to travel through. But in some places, like a galaxy cluster, there is so much gas and plasma, true sound or pressure waves can propagate through it. This was discovered in 2003 by the Chandra X-ray telescope, but it was never been processed to bring it into the range of the human ear. This process, known as sonification, converts data from anything like images or radio data into the range of human hearing. The purpose of this is to allow us to hear the data. We humans are listening to patterns in sound all the time, in speech, music and the natural world, and we are very good at picking up these and filtering out interesting sounds, even amongst a great deal of noise, just like you can hear a conversation in a room full of people. So hearing from extraterrestrial sources gives us another way to analyze it. One of the earliest and most successful applications of sonification is the Geiger counter which turns the detection of ionizing particles or X-rays or gamma rays, depending on the type of detection tubes used, which we cannot see, feel or smell into audible clicks. The more clicks, the more dangerous it is for humans, a sound which has become synonymous with radiation. Data from the Chandra X-ray telescope show that there were pressure waves being created in the gas surrounding the black hole at the center of the Perseus galaxy cluster as the material was being drawn into it. However, due to the huge scale of the phenomenon, their frequency was 57 octaves below that of a middle C on a piano. If you're unfamiliar with octave scales, each octave up doubles in frequency and each octave down halves in frequency. To bring out the original sounds from the Chandra data meant that it had to be increased in frequency by 57 to 58 octaves, or 144 to 288 million billion times the original frequency. The sound waves were extracted in radial directions, that is, outward from a center and then scaled up. The radar-like scan allows you to hear the sound was emitted in different directions, and the blues and purples in the image were both X-ray data. So how does sonification work? Well, there are various ways to hear an image, but one is to break up the light spectrum into three parts, infrared, visible light, and X-rays. 
and then resynthesize the sound and apply it to the light bands as either low sounds, medium sounds, or high sounds. Some even use musical instrument sounds and play them with data to create orchestral soundscapes. The data that makes up this image of M16, or the pillars of creation, is scanned left to right, and as the scan point traverses the image, the synthesized sound for each of the bands is mixed together to create a sonic image. These methods change depending on what's being scanned. The gravitational waves that the LIGO experiment detected from the collision of two black holes 1.4 billion years ago have been sonified, so we can hear the gravity waves as they travel through the solar system and the Earth, stretching and squeezing the fabric of space-time itself. The LIGO experiment uses two laser beams at right angles to each other and an interferometer. The laser light actually starts from a single laser, which is then split and then sent along each of the four kilometer arms to a mirror at the end, which is then reflected back and then recombined with the original light. If there is any difference in the length of the arms, the returned beams will be at a slightly different frequency from the original, and this difference will be picked up by the interferometer. This is so sensitive that it can measure changes in distance as small as a thousandth of the diameter of a proton. Yes, the thing that makes up the nucleus of an atom. Now, with the sonification of the data, we can hear the changes as the gravity waves pass through the Earth, changing the length of the arms as well. Of course, some will say that this is not really hearing the real thing, but there is no wave we can even see infrared or X-rays, let alone gravity waves. This is just a proxy method that allows us to do that. Just as in the amazing multicolour pictures we see of galaxies and nebula, they are a man-made assembly of different light spectra in one image. And this brings us on to the HARP project. This is a NASA citizen science project to analyse the data captured from the Themis mission, which was launched in 2007 and is still going, to understand what created the northern and southern lights, or the aurora and how solar wind and solar storms interact with the Earth's magnetic field to create substorms, the magnetic equivalent to severe weather down here on the surface. When solar plasma hits the Earth's magnetic field, it vibrates like the strings on a harp, but at a very low frequency, so it is processed to bring it up to our human hearing range. Being a citizen science project, you too can take part in the study using a web-based tool called HARP to listen to the data and then just report back what you hear. Part of this is to see if studying space sounds with your ears is as reliable as using traditional computer analysis. Sonification is a relatively new way of experiencing how the sun affects the Earth and what goes on in space, both in our own solar system and across the universe in fact, wherever we can gather the data from, and turn it into sound. And it looks to add a new and exciting sonic dimension to astronomy. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please thumbs up, share, and subscribe. And a big thanks go to all of our patrons for helping support the channel.